Hello, Hypercycle community. This series is all about reflecting on the incredible journey we've had in 2024 and looking ahead to the exciting opportunities in 2025. Today, we are reviewing the incredible year Hyper Appliance has had with the Hyper Appliance CEO, Evan Rodenberg. Evan, it's fantastic to have you here. How are you? I'm doing great, OK, and thanks for having me here. I appreciate you initiating this. It's uh, going to be a fun conversation. Appreciate it. Evan, let's start with 2024. It's been a year filled with milestones for Hyper Appliance. Could you share with us some of the standout achievements made by your team this year? Absolutely, yeah. 2024 has been a real defining year for Hyper Appliance. Um, I think one of the biggest achievements was just the initial incredible response to the first generation of the Hyper AI box. Uh, I, I honestly didn't expect that. Um, we launched it really with a, a goal of kind of testing out product market fit. And within three months, we were completely sold out of the first 400. So I think that really showed me a lot about how in enthusiastic and excited the community is for this vision that we have of running your own decentralized AI compute hub at the edge. And um, it was it was good because it kind of proved to me that like, okay, my initial inclinations were correct. I'm not crazy. This is going to be something that is uh, going to have tremendous product market fit. And that success allowed us to establish a uh, partnership. Uh, we have really solid partnerships with two major distributors, each have committed to purchasing uh, orders of over a thousand units over the next years. We ramp up production. So that's been awesome. Let me see. Uh, we also built a very loyal community, which has been super eager to be a part of this movement in, their, in various ways. They, uh, you know, it was demonstrated, I guess, by the excitement around those pre-orders for the H3. But beyond sales, um, I think we really had to focus on heavily refining user experience and really simplifying onboarding. It, it proved to be a little bit cumbersome at first. But ensuring that our main mission, which is to ensure that non-technical users could contribute to uh, this new economy of decentralized AI compute just as easy as setting up a new PC, that was like paramount for me. And I think we've achieved that. So, Thanks for the insight, Evan. My next question is, was there a particular moment this year that really tested the, the, the team? And what lessons did we learn from these experiences? Yeah, I think there was more than one moment. Um, you know, if I had to say uh, nothing in any order or anything like that, but early on, uh, we definitely faced some cooperation impasses with our manufacturing partner. And uh, I think that could have really derailed the launch of the H1, H2 and, and kind of uh, put us off course on a lot of our momentum. But our team handled it fabulously. We, we pushed through different miscommunications and, and, uh, and got the product out into the market. Uh, and, you know, we had to work through that and let the community know that there are always inevitable bumps in the road, especially when dealing with this kind of completely novel tech and hardware at the edge like this. But uh, everyone faced it tremendously and, and pushed through and persevered. So that was really good to see. Um, another challenge was definitely balancing uh, innovation with user accessibility and customer experience. So for me, especially being non-technical, advanced tech often feels kind of cumbersome and intimidating. Uh, but we learned that the importance of really listening to our users and focusing on education, whether it was directly to our community or um, focusing on um, helping HPEC DAO understand what we're building to a more technical degree so that they can go talk to developers and other people that are interested. Uh, the lesson that I really learned personally was that collaboration and communication and community building are as important or maybe more important as the technical development itself. Uh, and then I guess lastly, the process of, of actually choosing this next H3 manufacturer and making sure our quality control and testing are, are really on point uh, it, it has proved to be a bit more of a lengthy process than anticipated, but it will be well worth it in the end when we're able to start shipping and supporting the H3, hopefully at some point, uh, Q2 of 2025. And I know our community is really looking forward to that H3 preview. Evan, the next session of our interview will serve as an outlook for 2025. And my first question is, looking at the year ahead, what can our community expect from Hyper Appliance? I know you touched on the H3 a little bit, but is there any further information we could give or any projects that you're particularly excited about? Yeah, you know, 2025 is going to be a big year. I mean, obviously, like I mentioned, first we are launching the H3 Hyper AI box, which will feature significant hardware and software upgrades. Um, we're focused on enabling even more efficient compute and providing users with kind of expandability options to increase GPU capacity and other components that will allow them to take a lot of the kind of obsolescence factors of hardware and conceptually have the same device for years. So that's something I'm really excited about. Um, our team is also actively looking into other products. Uh, I, I don't want to really get into too much detail because they're really still in the formation stage, but 
uh, products to kind of expand our product line into things like specialized uh, even devices for vehicles, uh, home server type, more robust AI boxes, and even kind of a commercial grade line for large scale facilities that uh, may want to vertically integrate their hardware to run compute on-prem. So uh, you know, we have some contacts in, uh, in South America and, and other places that are excited to kind of uh, partner with us on those things, but don't want to give out too, too many details yet. Um, but th those are some really interesting projects that are kind of coming off of our initial success with the H1H2. Yeah, sounds like a lot to look forward to. And how do you see Hyper Appliance's role evolving within the larger HyperCycle and its JV network? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you, we wouldn't be here without HyperCycle. I mean, I, I view HyperAppliance as kind of the bridge that connects an everyday user like me to the immense opportunities of decentralized AI compute. Uh, so as HyperCycle grows, HyperAppliance ensures that anyone, regardless of technical background, like a, a, you know, a dummy like me that barely knows how to navigate uh, a PC, can really... Um, kind of participate in and benefit from the network on their own secure hardware, and they don't have to trust some uh, monolithic tech company or cloud system software. So uh, like I mentioned, we're, we're also focused on creating a really diverse product suite that will cater to different compute needs, which will kind of help drive adoption across industries, homes, and regions. Uh, so in that way, HyperAppliance is kind of enabling HyperCycle to fulfill its mission of democratizing AI, um, you know, while users generate value for themselves and their communities. So essentially, if I had to kind of put it another way, we're kind of playing a vital role in the vision of HyperCycle, uh, where we cooperate with this innovative tech to create a world where AI compute is ubiquitous, uh, it's accessible and decentralized away from just one or a few large tech companies with government contracts that control the AI economy. That, that's not what we want. Uh, we believe that in a sense, AI compute is like the oil of the new economy, and, and we're facilitating this ability for anyone to kind of own an oil rig. <laughs> and I know that's not like a perfect analogy, but something like that. So um, I, I see us as a very, uh, there's a, a vital uh, you know, synergy between our two companies right now, for sure. Yeah, thanks for that great insight, Evan. I think I'm particularly excited about the more robust hyper AI boxes that we're going to introduce in the future. I mean, the current the current generation could run one to two nodes, but I have speaking to different community members. They always ask me, "Can we run? Do, are you going to release boxes that capable of running maybe five, ten, fifteen nodes?" And I'm particularly excited about how that's going to evolve in 2025. Yeah, the, the, the goal is to really be able to have a box that's expandable, where we can um, not just be limited to maybe one or at, at most two nodes on each box, but to, to have that be something where you could have uh, for two, three, four, five years at a time and kind of expand out your operations. So yeah. Our next part of the interview includes a little mini AMA with questions submitted by our community. And the first one comes from Hyper Performance Edge Computing DAO who ask, are there any prerequisites such as software updates or integrations before deploying the Hyper AI box? Yeah, that's a great question. Um... I mean, before deploying the, the box, users will, I think the main thing is to, to ensure that they have access to sufficient internet bandwidth and power infrastructure. Um, solid Wi-Fi is okay, but plugging into Ethernet is obviously better. Uh, on the software side, we're really streamlining everything. I mean, the box will come pre-installed with all the necessary uh, integrations and will auto-update uh, probably at midnight every night to stay optimized. We're still kind of working on the, the uh, technical aspects of that, but uh, I'm really not exaggerating or being hyperbolic when I say that the goal is really to make setup as simple as plugging it in and connecting to the internet. Um, for clients who do want to be a little bit more hands-on and maybe have a little bit more of a technical background, we are working on developing a, a kind of dashboard app where you can jump off the default settings into a more customized experience of administering what models you want to run, uh, throttling performance features, et cetera. But, um, you know, we, for, we foresee most of our clients are kind of like me. They, they just simply want to run the default settings and be mostly hands-off. So that's what we're aiming for. Yeah, it's great to hear that. We're really championing this plug-and-play feature. And is it safe to assume that moving forward with Hyper Appliance, it's just going to get even more simpler? That is the idea, yeah. I mean, it, this is, I mean, um, you know, crypto has had this vision for a long time, like making it so that your grandma can use it. That, that's, um, in a way, that kind of our vision as well is like, uh, as we iterate these devices and expand our product line, 
uh, we named it hyper appliance because we think of appliances as being, you know, like a toaster, it's ubiquitous or, you know, some, some sort of thing in your house that you use when you need to use it. Um, it's very easy to operate. Uh, any generation that's living currently could easily interact with it. So that, that's, uh, that is the goal. Yeah. Thanks, Evan. And here's another popular one. Are there any plans to create regional ambassador programs to drive adoption? Yeah, um, there definitely is. I, I really want to spend a lot more time personally to build this out in 2025. Uh, we are actively exploring ambassador programs. Um, I really see the potential for regional ambassadors in, in helping us educate communities like like HPEC DAO is doing. Um, they can be assisting with onboarding, identifying opportunities for local partnerships. So there's a myriad of things that I think would be beneficial for setting up that kind of network. And that's something I really want to push for. Uh, we've definitely seen strong interest from individuals already who kind of want to champion hyper appliance in their regions. Um, and that's without us even advertising that we have a program like that. So, uh, you know, 2025, we'll definitely see that program take shape for sure. And if that is you, uh, you know, please reach out to our team and, and we'll stay in touch as we build that out. So short answer, yes, for sure. Thanks, Evan. And finally, are there any future plans to enhance the Hyper AI Box's capabilities? So we have our base product, but is there going to be a future iteration where we could build on the existing product? Definitely. Yeah, this kind of speaks to that uh, vision that our tech team has of expandability. Uh, you know, the, the, the H3 is a significant leap forward. And we'll be sending out those specs to our you know, community of followers as soon as we can, uh, as soon as we kind of firm up those manufacturing partner agreements. But um, our R&D team is, is already planning enhancements like you know, compute, uh, increased compute efficiency, uh, GPU, memory, and CPU upgrades, improved cooling systems, expandability. Uh, like I mentioned, we're also kind of looking at specialized configurations for unique use cases. Uh, including kind of enterprise level compute and edge environments. So um, yeah, everything is going to be, you know, whatever you saw in the H1, H2, uh, think orders of magnitude, more robust in, in uh, compute efficiency, uh, power consumption, et cetera. That's great to hear. And me personally, I'm trying to learn more about the tech side of things. And I'd love a future iteration of the Hyper iBox where I buy it. And then my notes split and I have to increase my hardware capacity. But instead of going buying more, another box, for example, I just buy more GPU, for example, and then stick that into the Hyper AI box. I think that would be an ideal solution for everyone. That's right. And we, and we foresee, you know, those GPUs that you could potentially expand onto your box as only getting better and cheaper in the future. So yeah, I think it's going to be a win-win all around. Thanks, Evan. And before we wrap up, let's talk about exciting pre-order campaigns currently on the way. Could you share more information about what's currently available and why the community should get involved as soon as possible? Yeah, definitely. So our, our pre-order campaign for the H3 is, is live. Um, you know, it's a great opportunity for the community to secure their box early uh, by putting down a $100 deposit. Users kind of lock in wholesale pricing, exclusive perks, priority delivery when we launch. Uh, there's some other perks that we're looking at announcing soon, but don't want to kind of jump the gun there. Um, demand has already been very strong and pre-orders kind of help us uh, really gauge and fine-tune production needs to meet the growing excitement around decentralized AI compute uh, within our community. So if you've been on the fence, now's the time to really get involved and be in part of this, uh, you know, be a part of this journey with us. We'd really love to have you. And uh, you can go to the main website for more. Well, Evan, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here today. Yeah, thank you, Okan. I really appreciate you hosting. I just want to thank uh, the HyperCycle and Hyper Appliance community for their incredible support in 2024. All you guys are awesome. Uh, this year really, truly would not have been possible without you. So um, cheers and here's to an even bigger 2025. Let's keep building that future of AI compute together. Thanks, everyone. And to our incredible community, thank you for joining us today. And remember, you can secure your spot in the future of Hyper Appliance by visiting the H3 pre-order link in the description. Please like, share, and subscribe, and stay up to date with all things HyperCycle. Wishing you all a very Christmas and a happy new year. See you soon. Bye, everyone.